What's up, Noob University? Are you thinking about becoming an entrepreneur? Do you already have an established business and just need some help? Well, stay tuned because my next guest has a lot of information that could help you. What's up, Noob University? Welcome back to the show. And today we have a very special guest. We have Mr. Colton Trout. How are you doing, sir? Doing pretty good. Oh, doing pretty good. Great, great. I'm glad you came to the show. And uh, let me just do a quick intro for you. Uh, so we have Mr. Colton Trout. He is an entrepreneurial change management coach, mm -hmm. entrepreneur himself. Mm -hmm. uh, also, he is a motivational speaker. So, you know, welcome to the show. I'm glad to have you on here. Uh, so let's get right into it. So tell me about yourself. How did you get started? Yeah. Um, so it's really kind of funny how I got started. Um, I got started at the wise old age of 12 years old. Wow. So yeah, my dad <laughs> took me to a business conference, which was super fun, taught you how to create a business plan. Uh, for any entrepreneur, you have to understand how to build a business plan. And so at 12 years old, I'm sitting there in the middle of this conference with everybody else at 30, 40, 50, 60 years old, older than me. And then I'm just sitting here taking more notes than everybody else. Um, so that conference essentially just put kind of fire under, underneath my butt to go find the business that I wanted to run. Uh, and then it's just been a journey ever since then. So trying businesses, starting businesses, failing at businesses, all, all that fun stuff. Yeah. So failing, unfortunately, is the negative side of entrepreneurship. But, you know, that's one of those things that people don't, you know, take for granted, right? Mm -hmm. You do learn a lot from your failures, right? Yeah. Uh, so take me through what was your first attempt, right, to get started with entrepreneurship and maybe becoming a business owner? Yeah. So um, one, I as far as failures go, yes. I never look at them as a negative connotation just because every single failure that I have has projected me to where I am at today. If I didn't have my failures, I wouldn't be where I am today. I wouldn't have the lessons needed in order to get me to where I am at today. Uh, the biggest kind of failure that I could speak to as far as when I was first getting started, um, I managed a bakery in high school, which is where I learned a lot of kind of small business techniques, management, um, people skills. So I went on a foreign exchange trip, came back from the foreign exchange trip. That uh, business had closed down and relocated up to Memphis, Tennessee. And so they brought me up to Memphis, Tennessee to help them relaunch their business. Um, but after a very short time, I realized that business was going to fail. It was not going to take it where I wanted to take it. It wasn't going to provide the income I wanted it to provide. It wasn't going to provide the freedom. And so that was probably the first big failure because I relocated from Texas mm -hmm. all the way up to Tennessee. I mean, completely moved my entire life, expecting to be there for a couple of years minimum, and then ended up coming completely back and having to start all over completely from scratch and just kind of lost it like, oh, what am I going to do now? So... Oh, that's yeah. a good story. I mean, it's it, it, and it's unfortunate that it happens, but you mm -hmm. do, like you mentioned, you learned a lot. Yeah. So that's, you know, it's a, po a way positive, right? So uh, one of the items that I found interesting, um, and by the way, I forgot to mention, you are also a podcaster. So mm -hmm. we'll plug that in. By the way, awesome podcast. Thank uh, you. Thank love you. It. Um, we one, had fun. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> it sounds like you had a, a lot of fun. And one of the things that um, I really want to touch on today is really on your coaching side, mm -hmm. because um, people like myself, you know, they struggle to kind of get you know, uh, their business going, their business yeah. planning, things like that. So really, this is why I think it's going to be beneficial. We're going to bring a lot of value to my audience and really anybody that listens. Right. Um, so take me through what it is that you offer with your services. So I'm, like you said, an entrepreneurial change management business coach. Essentially what that means is I get to help entrepreneurs go from point A to point B in the quickest way possible. Typically that is doubling your business to six figures or to multiple six figures. So let's say you're at a $50,000 mark within your business and you want to take it to a hundred thousand. Well, it's going to take a different game plan than what got you to the 50,000 uh, in order for you to double it in a shorter time frame. So they bring me in, uh, I get to coach them and how to go grow from 50,000 to hundred thousand or if they're they're at a hundred thousand and they broke through the hundred thousand mark but they're not able to do it consistently they're fluctuating between like eighty thousand to one hundred and ten thousand dollars a year and they really want to scale it up to two hundred three hundred four hundred thousand dollars i help them go once again from point a to point b to really doubling their business and growing it so a lot of it has to do just like in the title with change um but we look at it at it as adventures versus change so change has that negative connotation we 
hear change and we we already mm. start to cringe like everything kind of tenses up and it's like i don't want to change mm. because where i used to be is where i'm comfortable uh if i change i'm moving into something that may be unknown or unfamiliar and that's typically scary to most people so we look at it as an adventure because who doesn't want to go on an adventure <laughs> i mean adventures are fun and exciting and there's love and passion and some fear yes because you don't know everything that's going to happen and there's going to be some downfalls but at the end of it everybody is so pleased with where the adventures go. I mean, just go watch a movie nowadays. Exactly. There's an adventure in everything. <laughs> no, I'm yeah. glad that's that's awesome. That's a way way cooler way of thinking about like change management, mm-hmm. right? So, how do you approach a client that says, you know, and I'm I'm assuming that they reach out to you because they need they have a need. How mm-hmm. do you take a client that um, has a need but they are uncomfortable with change? What is something that uh, that you give to them that says eases them into the path of making that change? So, anytime somebody is uncomfortable with change, it's typically because their vision on where they're going is not clear at all. They have no idea where they're going. They have no idea why they're going there. They have no idea why they need to change. They have an inclination. If they're already talking to me, they have a gut feel. Something needs to happen in order for me to go reach my goals and I don't know what it is. Um, Or I know what it is, I just don't want to take it. And so I kind of help them understand exactly where it is they're going. They already know where they're at. They know their point A. They don't always know their point B. Once you know your point B well enough to where you can taste it, feel it, um, smell it, leaving point A is super easy. Um, It's like riding a bike right? You get on that bike and yes, it's going to be scary at first. You're going to wobble a little bit, but once you get on that bike and you're riding and going and going and going and get used to it, you're like, oh my gosh, this is so amazing. You totally forget where you were when you were scared or you fell down. Um, So it's helping them see, okay, you can ride the bike. Mm -hmm. You can be good at riding the bike. You can even ride the bike without any handlebars if Mm -hmm. you want. (laughs) So, but it's helping them get that really crystal clear um, picture almost. Right, right. And and that kind of goes back to what you said earlier about, Mm -hmm. you know, making it a, uh, making it a journey, right? Because Mm -hmm. that teaches you also to enjoy the process, right? Because uh, not a lot of people enjoy the process of kind of like struggling to get to where you're going, right? Yeah. Everybody just wants to win, 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 no matter yeah. what. And I don't want to fall at all, right? So, no. but the, it, like you mentioned, you learned a lot from your first experience, right? Oh, yeah. And it was one of those things where you, if you enjoy the journey, even if it's negative little down pitfalls yeah. like that, the end goal, it's a whole lot more attainable yeah. and, and it does make the journey a whole lot, yeah. whole lot better for everybody. Well, and with the whole, um, so my coaching takes on a theme called today's the day. Mm -hmm. Uh, behind that theme is living every single day as if it were the day, right? There's certain days in our lives, weddings, anniversaries, birthdays, getting interviewed for YouTube, where we look and it's like, oh my gosh, today's the day, right? Mm -hmm. It's filled with passion, excitement, joy, love. Well, what if we created a business and a life around that, Mm -hmm. where instead of saying, I have this tomorrow, I have that tomorrow, oh, I didn't get this done yesterday, we say, wow, today, oh my gosh, today I have this I get to do and I get to do this and this and this and this or mm-hmm. it could be as simple as I woke up and I made my bed or mm-hmm. I just got up oh my gosh today's like I got out of the bed today mm-hmm. like that's exciting um, and when you live with that type of excitement you're able to go get more done and you're able to take that journey and see it come to fruition even quicker nice. so yeah. yeah that's that's wonderful now one thing I noticed you, you are and hopefully everybody out there gets that from you You have like this passion I can sense it when you talk yeah. even and when I first met you you know I was kind of was like is he going to be just like he is on the podcast and you have that same level of energy yeah. which I really enjoy I mean it's I hope it's coming through but yeah so. <laughs> <laughs> but what is it what is something that drives you what is something that motivates you to kind of have that fire So that goes back to painting that crystal clear vision of where you're going. Mm -hmm. Um, One of the processes that I help my clients implement on their daily activity is what's called vision casting. I know we're going to get to that later. Um, But my vision casting is so clear that I have the same type of energy Mm -hmm. with every single thing that I do Mm -hmm. because I know that it is taking me one step closer to my end goal and Mm -hmm. to where I really want to be, which is hosting conferences twice a year, doing quarterly retreats for high ticket clients. Mm -hmm. Um, It's hitting certain income levels. It's impacting certain amounts of people. It's being able to donate certain amounts of dollars. And every time that I think about it, like it's so crystal clear, Mm -hmm. like it could happen today and I, it wouldn't surprise me. Nice. So yeah, Yeah, that's, that's good to hear. And what, 
what what is also something that you um, you kind of take into an everyday life, right? Because as you're going through the paces of your everyday life, you, yeah, you do have that goal. But what is something that you go, you wake up every morning and say, hey, this these are the little milestones that you have to get to mm-hmm. before I hit that end goal. And not necessarily business wise, but what are some like personals, you know, n- non tangibles? What are some yeah. of those things that you that are important to you that you feel are going to get you there as well? Yeah. So for the things that are going to be for me are mm-hmm. going to be different for everybody. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so within the two core that I created. The first one is the 10 steps to matching our daily activity, mm-hmm. where you implement certain processes to develop and figure out those secrets to your success. Mm-hmm. Um, for me, when it comes to kind of personal, it just goes down to kind of my fitness. Um, it kind of comes down to my relationships and how am I treating people that are in my life. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's developing those, it's growing those, it's discovering those. Um, but yeah, as far as personal life, it just kind of goes down to relational. And then every day I just wake up and be like, how can I grow today? Yeah. And then I just go. That's good. I'm, yeah. It's it's definitely something that I personally kind of struggle with right? because mm-hmm. I don't know what my end goal is. Yeah. Uh, like we were talking a little bit earlier. I don't really know where I'm going with this. Yeah. So it's tough to kind of see the end goal, right? Yeah. Because I, I don't know what that is just yet. Yeah. You know, whether that's, you know, my own show, mm-hmm. you know, something like that. Right. So I'm glad that you kind of have those little steps in between to kind of point you in that direction. Yeah. Um, or how do you see, get to that end goal if you mm-hmm. don't really have that vision clear? What is something that you can do, something that you can develop to kind of get get you there? So that kind of comes down to a couple of different questions. One of the questions you can always ask is what do you want your life to look like? Uh, end goal wise, is it you're traveling a whole bunch, you're sitting at home with your kids, or you're, you're sitting in a cabin, you're sitting on a beach, like, what do you want that life to look like? Because that's going to help you develop the work life that's going to be able to support that. Most people think, oh, what do I want to do career wise? Well, career-wise, you're not always going to do that thing. Um, There's something that's past that. And we want to look what's past that. And then we want to figure out, okay, what do we want to do career-wise? There are some people that want to uh, have a small apartment with their um, significant other, a dog, and that's it. They want to go to work nine to five, and then they want to come home, and they want to go out on the weekends with their friends and travel every once in a while. So for them, having an office job is perfect for them. There's other people, man, I want to travel twice a month and go see everywhere that I possibly can in the entire world. Okay. You're going to need something a little bit more nomadic, uh, something that's a little bit probably online and has a bigger income because travel isn't always super cheap. It can be cheap. Um, and then it also goes back to, okay, do you have a taste for the luxury life? Do you want things that are a little bit more high end, like private jets or um, private helicopters or super nice cars or a super big house? Mm -hmm. And so then you can base it down to, okay, work wise, I need to do something that's a little bit more lucrative. Uh, Then it goes down to what's your purpose, vision and character, what I call your PVC. Um, Every single house has PVC within it because without it, your water wouldn't get where it needs to go and um, pipes and everything. Um, so your PVC is extremely crucial for you to have, not only for your personal life, but for your business life. So when you know your purpose, you know, your vision and you know, your character, um, then it's much easier to go make decisions and to go figure out what you really want to have. So that vision is that big term, long term. But if you don't know that discovering your purpose and then discovering the character that you want to portray or the values that you want to portray, uh, within everything that you do, that will also help you understand where you want to go in life. Yeah, so, that's yeah. definitely that's good, clear goals, uh, clear understanding of where you need to be, depending mm-hmm. on how you want to live. I yeah. really like that. Um, so one thing also that I really wanted to touch on is your coaching. Right. Mm-hmm. So how did you get started with that? Well, how do you, how does that get started? Right. Because you have yeah. you have this vision of entrepreneurship. You yeah. want to do things. How do you get into that? So and that's a really also another funny story, because. I didn't get into that on purpose. (laughs) Um, At the time, I was running a financial services organization, working with a phenomenal, phenomenal company that I owe a lot of my knowledge to. Um, And I was getting approached by people outside of the company to coach them to go start businesses or to grow a business. Um, Since I've been on the entrepreneurial journey since I was 12, 
people always knew that I liked business. Um, when I started to getting into that company and growing and getting state and nationally recognized, people were like, okay, he actually knows something about business. Mm -hmm. um, and so from there, I just got question after question after question after question. And then it got to the point where like, wow, I really like answering these questions. I'm really good at answering these questions. And people are seeing results when I answer the questions and they actually take my advice. So from there, it just kind of turned into, okay, now it's more of a coaching. And and then I realized my today's the day theme, which took me a couple of years to recognize and really articulate and formulate what I wanted that theme to kind of be and represent for people. And then we moved basically from there into kind of creating courses. Nice. So, yeah. yeah. So definitely that's a good way to get started, if, especially if you're already doing it. Hey, mm -hmm. let's get paid. And <laughs> exactly. Oh, yeah. Yeah. If you like it, uh, you could probably get paid for it. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. Good to know. So what is uh, as you're getting started, right? So you start getting all these clientele. You mm -hmm. already had some background in it. But mm -hmm. what's something that you struggled with it from the beginning? What's something that uh, you say, OK, that was I had a, there was a steep learning curve in, uh, as, as far as that went. Client acquisition. Mm -hmm. That's like the number one thing that all of my clients always struggle from. And that's one thing that pretty much any business ever struggles with is bringing in a consistent amount of clients, um, money or whatever it may be to funneling into the business. Because I have this amazing, pro you can have this amazing process, amazing mm -hmm. product, whatever it may be. But if you don't have everybody coming into that service or product and using it, it doesn't do much good. <laughs> so a lot of people struggle with getting people into that. And that's where I really struggled. Um, everybody knew me as a financial services guy. Everybody knew me for another business that I had owned previous to that. And so when I was like, okay, no, this is more of what I want to do. Um, and this is the direction that I'm moving into. It was just a difficult process to get people to realize, okay, this is where he's at. So, yeah. Yeah, that's good. That's good. I'm glad you share that. Yeah. All right. So let's talk about one thing that's interesting because we're talking about entrepreneurship. What is it? Why are people so drawn to entrepreneurship? Why are people chasing that nowadays? What do you think? Freedom. Freedom. It, it really is. Um, when you're an entrepreneur and you get to embark on your entrepreneurial journey and you actually create a business that's successful and that can sustain your level of income or lifestyle that you want to have. It provides a level of freedom. It also comes back down to you get to do what you love and you know why you're working. Uh, most people that have a job are working XYZ tasks and they may never really understand why they're doing XYZ tasks. So it's very mundane. It's very just again and again and again and again. And it just gets boring. Um, when you're working for yourself, there's always something new to do. There's always something new to learn. But you know exactly why you do every single thing that you do because it's all extremely intentional. Um, and to people that are getting started and to people that have been entrepreneurs for a while, that's addicting. Uh, when I get to wake up and I don't report to anybody else but myself, um, it's it's pretty good. <laughs> so it's like I don't have to call into a boss being like, oh, I'm sick. I don't feel like going in today. Um, or I'd be like, hey, do you want to give me a raise? Um, give me a 3% raise. I'm like, no, I can give myself a 300% raise though if I want to. Um, so, yeah, it's it's really, really freeing to just to be able to do essentially whatever you want. So awesome. Yeah. I mean, that's the life everybody wants to live, right? You don't want to work under somebody, um, but you do have to put in that work to get to that spot. Now, as far as that goes, who is it for? Who's entrepreneurship for? What, what's the personality type? What are some of the traits they have to have before you can say, hey, I want to pick up, I want to do entrepreneurship as my day to day career? Yeah. So a lot of people kind of already know if they have that entrepreneurial gene um, or itch to go mm -hmm. run their own business or to work for themselves. Uh, typically, it's if you're tired of working for somebody else, uh, you don't work well for other people. I definitely do not work well for other people. <laughs> um, and then it goes down to if you have a purpose and you know that you have a purpose for doing something greater and you really want to go see that happen and to bring that to fruition. Um, like, let's say that's helping people smile more often. Uh, and so it could be something as basic as that. Being an entrepreneur will allow you to do that in way more... Uh, so many more ways than you could possibly imagine, but it allows you to do it with so much purpose and fulfillment that it's just enriching to everybody. Great, great. And on the flip side of the coin, who is a nut for? Who's somebody that should probably shy away from being an entrepreneur? Uh, somebody that has no self-control, no consistency, and no integrity. 
So if you don't have integrity, basically meaning if you don't do what you say you're going to do, entrepreneurship is going to be extremely difficult. Um, it's still doable and you can learn integrity and you can grow integrity. Um, but if you don't have integrity from the get-go, you're not going to be very successful. You're going to hate every ounce of it. You're not going to reach the big success that you want to reach. You're not going to love it. So you're always going to be kind of having the fraud syndrome where you kind of go in, you're like, I don't really deserve this. Um, and even people that have integrity go through that as well, but it's just at a different level. Um, so yeah, anybody that doesn't have integrity or really doesn't want to do anything, if you're just pure lazy, <laughs> please do not get into entrepreneurship. Go keep your job. Um, we don't need lazy people and entrepreneurs. <laughs> we don't, we, does not mix well. So <laughs> Plus it gives everybody a bad name that's oh, really trying to put in the effort, yeah. right? Because, and that's something interesting because, uh, and I know a couple of people that I follow kind of mentioned this, you know, uh, Entrepreneurs were seen kind of like these gritty, gr greedy people that just kind of, you know, money suck. hungry. Exactly, money hungry people. But lately, I've seen a shift, right? So, you know, you look at the Gary V's yeah. that are, you know, growing these huge companies, but they're doing it in a manner that's ethical and that they're actually helping people, right? So, yeah, it's purpose driven. Purpose driven, yes. Yeah, we're, we're going very heavily to a purpose driven economy, even, even for the workforce and people that are going out and getting jobs. Um, the CEOs of major corporations are understanding we're moving more towards a vulnerable growth kind of mindset. Um, we're moving more towards purpose driven where millennials and Gen Z and Gen Y, um, they're going to the workforce and they're like, if this doesn't have purpose, I don't want to do it and I'm not going to do it. Mm -hmm. And so the CEOs and corporations are having to figure out, okay, how do we give our work purpose? And typically that's finding a mission that they can get behind and that other people want to support, um, which is why you see people like Gary Vee becoming very successful because companies and organizations realize, well, we need to do something more ethical, more purpose driven. And Gary Vee is very good at that and he can tell you exactly how to go do it. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. Oh, that's good. And one thing we just touched on before I ask the next question is you mentioned min millennials, right? Mm -hmm. So we're talking about a generation that it's kind of, they said you kind of throw out the middle finger to, mm -hmm. to anything that was conventional, right? Yeah. So, so what is something that you would tell the typical entrepreneur, right? That they should probably look out for and not just uh, millennials, right? So we got you know, this whole slew of people that are coming through that are going to have these way different values. How do you, what do you say to those entrepreneurs uh, to kind of prepare them for this new work? force that's coming up. So I'm assuming you're talking about the older generation. Yes. The yeah. older generation. Um, ask yourself why, because that's what millennials are asking. That's what younger generations are asking. They're asking the question why, and they're not just asking it once they're asking it over and over and over and over again, which goes back to that purpose driven work. Um, if you run an organization or you have a company that doesn't have a solid value plan or a solid mission or purpose statements, um, these younger generations and entrepreneurs are going to look at you like you're crazy. You're going to get outdated and just be like, okay, bye. Mm -hmm. um, because there's so many of us coming to replace you in the workforce um, or as entrepreneurs and starting businesses that, I mean, you'll see it left and right. People are closing shop and closing down because they're not keeping up with the times. They're not mm -hmm. keeping up with social media. They're not keeping up with purpose-driven work. Uh, and these younger generations definitely, definitely want purpose-driven work. So yeah, oh, find excellent. A find a purpose. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's yeah, number one. Find your purpose, and then you know, stay stay up to date, stay current. Right? Yeah, it never hurts. Yeah. Um, so so with that in mind, right? Because uh, we talked about entrepreneurship, what are some of the pitfalls and things like that? How can coaching help those upcoming businesses? Let's, let's talk about a purely startup, right? How does how can coaching help you evolve from like zero to kind of get you yeah. to where you, you you know you're having some time off with the family? How does how does your services? How can that help? A company. Coaches take um, decades and turn them into days. I'm going to say that again. Coaches take decades and turn them into days. Um, as entrepreneurs, we are continuously growing and developing. If you're not growing and developing, your business will crash and burn, or you're going to hit this plateau and you're going to have no idea how to get out of it. So you have to be consistently growing and developing in your personal development and in your business development. Uh, coaches are able to come in and specifically I'm able to come in and say, oh, you have this vision and you want to go do X, Y, Z. Okay. You need to do this, 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 and this, and that's how you'll go reach it. So instead of you having to come to one point and be like, how do I do this? Okay. This is how I do it. 
Okay. And then go, 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 go hit a plateau. Oh, I need to learn something new. Okay. Let me go learn how to do this. Mm -hmm. They can kind of forecast and they can see ahead and say, these are the issues you're going to run into. Uh, and then these, this is what you need to do. And if it's something that, because I'm not an expert in every single field, I will never claim to be an expert in everything, but I know the processes and systems to becoming an expert in whatever you want to become an expert in. Mm -hmm. So instead of having to take the him and haw, like, oh, let's just go read books or read all the books that I can read. Well, let's go read directed books um, that lead to a directed decision that lead to a further progressed business plan or a further along in our goals versus just reading anything. Um, I constantly get this question of like, oh, what book do you recommend? And I hate that question so much <laughs> because there are a thousand amazing books out there. I mean, just pick up a Kindle, go to Audible, go to Amazon, uh, go to Google and type in good books and you'll find millions and millions that are out there. Mm -hmm. But you don't want to read just any one book. You want to read a book that's going to answer a question for you. But first you have to understand what that question is. Coaches help you identify what that question is and then coach you to the right book or the right direction, process, system, whatever it may be to going and answering that question as well. So it's essentially somebody that can take your goals and bring them to your fruition way faster than you would be able to do alone. It's like saying two minds are better than one. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's so, great. Yeah. yeah. So what is something that challenges uh, somebody that's coaching, right? What is what is the biggest challenge when you're dealing with any business, right? Whether they're a startup, an established mm -hmm. business, what's the huge, what's the biggest um, hurdle to get them to change? Uh, consistency is one of them. Uh, and then a consistent vision casting. So when there's a lack of consistency, when there's a lack of uh, or a plateau within a business or they're not hitting their goals consistently or they're not hitting them really at all mm -hmm. and they want to actually go achieve a goal, it comes down to your vision. Like we said earlier, mm -hmm. you know, really getting clear on where you're going um, so that a way you're OK to leave behind what you're used to doing and go do what you've never done to go achieve what you've never ob obtained before. Because mm -hmm. in order to go get a goal that you haven't ever reached, you have to do things you've never done before. Mm -hmm. You can't do that if you're holding on to your past life, your past habits, mm -hmm. your laziness, your inconsistency. Um, and so getting people to cast that vision clear enough on a daily basis is one of the biggest hurdles because you can do it consistently for a couple of weeks, couple of months, 90 days, whatever it may be, but it's the long term doing it consistently that really compounds. It's like, okay, if I can do it consistently for a week, um, like I had a client, she did the vis vision casting for one week. In that week, she made more money than she had ever made in her business before. Um, and she accredited it to the vision casting process that we had put into place into her business. Um, and so if she saw that result in a week, what would happen if she did it in two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, five weeks, six weeks, a year, two years, 10 years down the road of consistently doing this vision casting? Not only because um, she, would she make that amount that she made in a week, she can make that now in an hour in a day, in a minute while she sleeps, right? Mm -hmm. But because she does that vision casting consistently. Um, but if you cut it short, so you do it for a week, okay, so I'll result, okay, I'm done. <laughs> well, then you just you missed out on exactly. 10 results that she could have had. Like, let's say you made $1,000. Well, you just missed out on $10,000 because you quit the process. So one thing I would also say as well is fall in love with the process. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Yeah, definitely. And that's, that's kind of what we went back to earlier mm -hmm. was, you know, you have to really enjoy the in between to get to where you want to go at the yeah. end. So that's, that's good to know. Um, the other thing I wanted to cover, right. Is we have, um, and unfortunately with entrepreneurs, you're going to have those people that don't want to change, even though they bring you on board, right. Yeah. They're, they're, they have that fear, right. Because they, you come on board and you make these great suggestions mm -hmm. and everything looks great, but then they don't want to execute. Right. Yes. So how do you get somebody that's, and maybe they didn't bring you on, right? It was somebody from like their um, public relations or yeah. whoever it was yeah. that hired you. And yeah. they go, oh, this guy has no clue what he's talking about. But you made these great suggestions. How do you change those people's mindsets? It's funny. It goes right back to the vision casting. Where are you taking them? Uh, and this even kind of goes down to culture, right? Mm -hmm. Like let's say you have an organization because um, I've run organizations with 250 team members with 100 plus internationally team members. Um, when you're working with that level of a corporation or an organization, organization and you're going down to the everyday work or getting them to do things that they may or may not want to do, it goes down to where are you taking them and why are you taking them there? 
Because once they understand why they're going where they're going or exactly where they're going and they understand, okay, that's a safe place. I can go there. I can achieve that. Um, then it just becomes really easy for them to go take that step. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of times people have a fear of failure, so they're not willing to change because they know exactly what they're doing is working in the moment and producing some income for them. Um, like let's say they're making $1,000 a month and they want to make $10,000 a month. Well, they know what they're doing currently makes $1,000 a month. And so making the necessary changes to go grow to $10,000 a month they're going to have to put in more work, mm -hmm. um, more time and effort and energy into going and doing that new systems, new processes, because what worked for $1,000 is not going to work for $10,000 mm -hmm. consistently consistently mm -hmm. on a month to month basis. Right. So helping them understand, hey, your business can do $10,000. Here's exactly what it's going to look like once it is making $10,000. Mm -hmm. Here's the income you're going to be making. Here's the impact that you're going to be creating. This is the influence you'll have. Uh, these are the processes that we're going to put in place that are going to do exactly this because of this, because then you do this. Um, then it's a very easy, oh, okay. Um, here's a beautiful movie of exactly what's going to happen. Well, I can leave the ticket booth to actually go watch the movie now because I know exactly what the movie is going to look like. And it's so crystal clear. So, but if you never know what that movie is, like you mm -hmm. don't want to leave the ticket booth. Like, right. let's say you're looking for movies and you're like, uh, <laughs> I don't know any of these. And they see one, oh, I know this one. And you're going to go see that one right. um, versus all the ones that you don't know. So if you can paint that picture super clear, then it's just, it's an easy move. It mm -hmm. really is. Everybody thinks change is super difficult. Mm -hmm. Change is not difficult. It's your perception on change being difficult mm -hmm. that makes it difficult. I love that. So your perception, that's, yeah. that's a great way of yeah. looking at it. Well, I mean, if we always expect change to be difficult, mm -hmm. what's it going to be? Mm -hmm. difficult. <laughs> so if we look at it like, oh my gosh, change is exciting and fun. What is change going to be? Exciting and fun. So it goes back to that perception. It goes back to that mindset um, mm -hmm. and the mindset that you have to actually going and achieving things. Good. Yeah. So. I'm glad I'm glad that's kind of the process because I, I feel like a lot of people romanticize kind of the way they do things, right? Yeah. So it's, oh, it's yeah. oh, this, you know, it's been working for so long. Why should we change? We're, you know, we're, we might not be growing, but you know, we're, we're, yeah. we're kind of maintaining and yeah. that's not yeah. where you want to be as a business, right? Mm -hmm. You want to continue to grow. And I guess some people, they're happy being in that spot. But mm -hmm. again, again, don't complain about not growing your business. Yeah. Not, yeah. <laughs> I always tell people be content, but not comfortable. Yes. So be content with where you're at. I mean, don't sit there and start comparing yourself to everybody else mm -hmm. because comparison is the thief of all joy. Mm -hmm. So be content with where you're at and the process and the journey or the, the chapter that you're in, but don't be comfortable. There's room for growth. None of us are perfect. Nobody's business is perfect. Gary Vee's business is not perfect and he'll be the first one to tell you that. Mm -hmm. I'll be the first one to tell you my business is not perfect mm -hmm. and it's also not for everybody. Mm -hmm. um, but anybody can come in and take the processes that I've created and go build a massive business, build a massive organization, uh, create the impact and influence that they really want to have. Yeah. Great, great. Let's close out a little bit and let's have a little bit of fun. So I got a couple of questions to ask you. So these are going to be what I call my rapid fire questions. Cool. A little bit personal, make it kind of fun, nice, nice and fluffy. Uh, but at the end, I got a special question that you know would hopefully help some people out in the end. Uh, so let's get right into it. So lemonade stand, how much do you charge? Ooh. 250. 250. All right. Do you want a profitable profitable business or a reputable business? Both. Both. <laughs> <laughs> but if I had to pick one, it would be reputable. Reputable. Suit or t-shirt and jeans? T-shirt and jeans. Fun boss or strict boss? Fun. Worst decision you've ever made? Tequila. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's the end of the night. Everybody's tequila is a bad idea. <laughs> I don't do tequila. I like Pick that. any of the songs, they all come true. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. All right. So best decision you've ever made? Working for myself. Great. What song best describes you? Ooh. Okay. There's, I love music and I'm the odd person that listens to every kind of music. Um Warrior by Demi Lovato. Mm. That has been one of my jams for probably the past eight years or so. Um, it's a really uplifting, powerful song um, that just talks about becoming like and being a warrior. So and I love it. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. All right. What is your worst fear? Ooh. Um, 
I wouldn't say that I have any. The the lifestyle that I've created, the the mindset that I'm consistently developing, fear is almost the same as excitement. Because if I'm scared to go do something like jump out of a plane, I want to do it 10 times more because I have the the fear of it. Um, mm-hmm. But fear is just, um, there's an acronym for it. It's like false realities, like feeling true or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> but it's one of those things like I just look at it and it's like fear to me just doesn't exist. It's just, okay, is this on purpose or is this not on purpose? Mm-hmm. If it's on purpose, great, I'm going to go do it. Um, whether I have hesitation or anxiety about it or not, um, if it's not on purpose, great, I don't have to do it. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great way yeah. of thinking of it. Yeah. All right. So what is your greatest goal in life? To create an impact that lasts eternally. Nice. Yeah, <laughs> that's a good, that's <laughs> profound. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's a little bit more on kind of the spiritual side. Um, oh, that's good. But yeah, so. Oh, I like that. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right, so let's close yes. out. Last one. All right, now this okay. one here, this is where I want to hopefully touch somebody out there that's listening. So what is one thing that you give the beginning entrepreneur? What is something that you could provide to them and ensure them that what they're doing is the right choice? Does it give you peace? So like when I'm thinking about going on stage or working with a client, it gives me a peace. Um, I just, my gut tells me that this is exactly where I'm supposed to be and exactly what I'm doing, no matter what anybody else says. Uh, when I was creating that huge organization, the financial services company, I mean, everybody and their mother told me that I was not going to be successful. I wasn't going to be able to do it. Um, I had my own parents that were telling me, this isn't what you're going to do long term. This isn't for you. Uh, you're going to fail. We won't support you. But my gut was like, this is where you need to be and this is what you need to be doing. Trust your gut. Um, your gut makes the decision for you eight seconds within the States after you hear a set of information. In the UK, it's two to three minutes. Um, so if you're in the States, eight seconds after you hear a certain amount of information, your gut has already told you what you need to go do. Now your mind will start kind of coming into play and placing the fear, the anxiety of, oh, you can't do that. But trust your gut and just do it. Oh, that's awesome. That's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. All right. So now that we're closing up, so let's put a plug on kind of what you're doing, because I really think that everybody out there, they definitely need to go follow you. I mean, I started following you recently and man, you have awesome content. Thank you. So let's, let's go ahead and throw some plugs on there, man. Like, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so you can pretty much find me anywhere on social media using the hashtag TTDTLF. It stands for today's the day to live free. Um, that's my Instagram. You can find me on Facebook using that. Uh, you can look up Colton Trout. Um, there's not many that are out there, so you will probably find me. <laughs> Um, but that's once again on Facebook, Instagram, podcast, all of those. Awesome. So, awesome. Yeah, just look up Colton Trout. You'll find me. <laughs> <laughs> great. Great. Yeah. So, yeah. Oh, one quick question I just thought about. Let's talk about social media before we okay. close out the show. Yeah. All right. What is something that you are using that you see a lot of growth on? Groups. Groups. On Facebook specifically, groups are phenomenal. Um, if you're not on Facebook, you're probably missing out on a huge amount of clientele unless your clients are not on Facebook. Not everybody's clients are on Facebook. Um, my clients typically tend to be on Facebook and Instagram. So that's where I try and focus my time as well as podcast. Um, so for Instagram though, use stories, um, and use video. So your Instagram lives and then same with Facebook, use video as well. So do your live videos. Awesome. Look at that. Last tidbit from Mr. Colton Mm Trent. Yeah. (laughs) Well, this was fun and very informing. uh, informational so thank you for coming on i really appreciate it love the energy love everything you got to bring and uh you know we'll be in conversation awesome thanks so much for having me on glad to be here all right no problem all right that closes out the show thanks everybody for watching awesome all right that was fun